things, my dears, in love and light. Eliminating self-doubt and why you doubt yourself. Now shortly, I'll give you three tools on how to help you to eliminate self-doubt. But let's just talk about how and why self-doubt comes about in the first place. Now, we are really the sum of our experiences that have happened to us, plus some bleed through from previous lifetimes and the nature of our personality and all that. But it is pretty much a clean slate in this lifetime. And from the beginning, we are given ways and means and ideas of how to perceive ourselves, perceive ourselves in relation to others, and how to perceive reality and how to interact, interact with reality. Now we have teachers, and they are our parents, our peers, family members, and others. Mainly our parents. Now, we never want to hate on our parents because they are the way they are for a reason. They may have had sad backstories. They may have been neglected or, you know, ignored, not emotionally supported. They may have been told they're useless, they'll amount to nothing. And all sorts of things have happened to them. They haven't had parenting lessons. They are human beings too. And then they pass on their issues onto their kids because they don't know how to parent either. It's like the blind leading the blind. Now as you come into adulthood and you realise a few things, you start to look back at the way you were parented and see it's less than optimal and other things that happen to you, say with family members and peers etc. But we must never blame them because everyone does what they do for a reason and they are the way they are because of their experiences. So we can have understanding, empathy for them, and therefore forgiveness because we understand those things. Now, let's say you're in a family, this may not apply to you, but let's say you're in a family where you were told you're a bit useless or you'll never amount to anything or you're constantly criticized for what you're doing so you weren't given much positive reinforcement it was all negative, negative. Now, your parents may have felt this was the best way to get you to do well. <laughs> but what, was, what it was doing was reinforcing that no matter what you do, it was negative and you would be perceived negatively. Or your parents may have kind of ignored you and no matter what you achieved, it didn't make much difference. It fell on deaf ears. So that would send you the message, no matter what you do, no one really gives a damn. Or you may have been given high expectations you had to meet or targets you had to meet. They're a bit unattainable or there are conditions put on this. For example, if you don't get an A, I will be horrified. So there would be a sort of an emotional punishment there if you didn't get an A. And therefore, when you don't get an A, you feel like you've really disappointed someone. So in addition, you might feel that you're constantly disappointing someone, disappointing your parents or whoever your carers were. Now, all of these things, and there's more I'll go into in a minute, can contribute to this self-doubt, that you can't ever do anything right. And when you don't, the love is absent, the validation is absent. Now, we all need validation as human beings to know we're doing the right things in this reality. So our parents or carers would hold up like a mirror, a mirror as it were. They would mirror for us how we're doing. So their smiling faces would show us we're doing the right thing, we're appreciated, we're loved, we're doing well. Their sad, angry faces, faces would show us we're not doing so well, we're doing something wrong, I need improvement. Now if you had parents or other carers that always had angry faces on, then you would constantly have mirrored at you that you're not doing so well, that you are, say, useless or worthless or whatever you're doing is futile. So you see, it need not be verbal, you are a failure, you're stupid, you're ugly, you're not going to succeed, whatever. It may just be body language, facial expressions and the absence of positive reinforcement and validation and the negative mirroring 
that makes us feel like I'm a failure, I'm worthless, and that I will never amount to anything. So you may not remember being told negative things over and over, but you may remember an absence of what you needed, an absence of support, an absence of validation and acknowledgement, or negative body language and negative facial expressions aimed at you. So in the face of all that, you question yourself a lot, i.e. you doubt yourself a lot. And these programs are brought into your adult life, so you carry them forward because you've been writing programs on how to deal with reality and interact with others. And if your mirrors have been telling you you're no good and you're rubbish, then that will be carried forward. Now, if anyone's watching this that hasn't experienced any of this and doesn't experience self-doubt, then I'm not telling you that any of this has happened to you. And even if you are experiencing self-doubt, again, everyone is so different and their experiences are so different. This is just one possibility of what might have happened to you. Because traumas can also occur in early adulthood as well and going forward that can affect us too. Let's say you set up a business and you're really confident you're going to succeed and then that business went down the tubes pretty quickly. That would cause a lack of confidence and self-doubt in business endeavours going forward perhaps. You may pick yourself up and carry on, but it may hit you very hard and cause self-doubt. You may have self-doubt when it comes to relationships. Let's say you've had a string of five or six relationships that didn't work out and now you have a lot of self-doubt about yourself and you feel a bit worthless. So it doesn't always have to come from childhood. It can come from <laughs> somewhere between then and now because we're still writing programs. It's just, as children, we are like sponges that suck up everything and we're very dependent on those who look after us and if those who look after us are not being very good mirrors then we suck it up and think it's normal. Into adulthood we can reason it a bit better even in adolescence but it still can affect us. Now you as an adult today are much better at reasoning and that's why you can unpick these things and so that's why I'll give you a few methods in a minute to help you unpick these things. So here's some examples of experiences that may have caused you to have a lot of self-doubt being repeatedly pressured into behaviours, for example, working hard, paying attention, going faster, saying your prayers, etc. Being pressured into doing things and if you don't do them correctly there'll be consequences. And to fit a certain mould I want you to be just like your dad or just like your brother and then when you don't achieve that then there's likely emotional consequences being told you're no good amount to nothing not good looking a bit fat a bit stupid and that can lead to a feeling of failure low self-esteem poor self-image image and not being good enough plus a lack of as I say a positive reinforcement or just apathy about your behaviors and achievements or even your existence and that your thoughts and feelings were wrong or unwarranted. So if you feel like your thoughts or feelings were wrong or unwarranted, this is where, let's say, a parent doesn't allow you to have the thoughts and feelings you want to have. So if you have an opinion about something, you're told to stop it. You don't know anything about this. Be quiet. Or why are you crying? Grow up. Man up. Deal with it. <laughs> so when this happens, it shows that your thoughts and feelings are not valid and that it was wrong to have them. And so you question, are these thoughts and feelings right? Because I've just been told they're wrong. So that causes a lack of self-confidence because you can't trust in your own thoughts and feelings because you're told they're wrong and you're not supposed to have them. You're not meant to decide for yourself. You're meant to eat what you're given. You're meant to go where you're supposed to go, wear what you're supposed to wear. So when you grow up into adulthood, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what do I wear? What do I eat? Where do I go? What do I do? <laughs> because you're always told that your decisions were wrong and that their decisions were right. So how do I make my decisions now? That parent is gone. Who makes my decisions for me now? Because my decision making skills are obviously substandard. So this can cause self-doubt as well. Please see my video on personality parts that I did some time ago. 
about the different parts of your personality and how they pop up in certain situations. So you might have a protector part, which is trying to protect you from emotional harm. Or you might have an inner child. Or you might have a playful personality fragment that comes up in a playful situation. Or you might have a, a sexual personality fragment who's feeling sexy and comes up in a sexy situation. Or you might have a, a tired, apathetic not very motivated personality part, which is a more negative one perhaps, that comes up in other situations. Now these are parts of you that come into play when required. Now in there, if you have self-doubt, you have a self-doubter. It's the doubter personality fragment. And you can feel the doubter come about, let's say, when you're about to do something. Say I'm about to take a test it doesn't have to be something as clear cut as taking a test. It can be something much more nebulous and day to day. The self doubter might crop up. It's almost like you can feel it on your shoulder, saying you're going to fail. You haven't learned enough. You haven't remembered enough. You're stupid. You can't do this. And so this self doubt, and you feel it being there with you, making you doubt yourself. Now you can recognise you have a doubter personality fragment, and perceive it is separate to you. You are in the driving seat. You are the conscious you of today. And you may have this doubter personality fragment. And I suggest that everyone has one to some degree, but some people have it worse than others. Now this doubter personality fragment that pops up, he's actually doing it in good intentions. He believes he's protecting you from emotional pain. He doesn't want you to take the test, because he knows that if you fail, there's going to be some consequence. Because you learned this earlier in life, that if you failed, you didn't get an A, that's just one example, that your mother would be horrified. So the doubter says to you, don't bother because you're not going to get an A, and then you're going to have emotional pain. You're going to feel unworthy, inferior, useless. It's futile. So the doubter personality fragment believes it's doing it in your own interest to protect you from emotional harm. So here are some ways to help eliminate self-doubt. Method number one, a form of gestalt therapy, which I'm fond of, is going back in time and doing a little role play. Now you can either choose an event that really happened or you can just sort of make one up. Let's say you trace a lot of your self-doubt back to your dad. And let's say he was always angry in your presence. He was always very busy with work and he couldn't be bothered to listen to you. So that would cause you a bit of self-doubt because you've had no validation from this man and, and he doesn't seem like he loves you at all. So you might go into a role play in your mind. So you need to be in a meditative state, meditate for about 20 minutes. So you're really relaxed. And if you're okay to do this and it's not too painful for you, make sure you've got family members there to support you if you're going to feel upset, you think. So go into this visualisation and visualise telling your dad how you feel and what happened. But don't blame him. Remember, we're not hating on him because he is the way he is for reasons. Think about his past. Tell him how you feel and the things he said, what effect it had on you. And then listen for his response. And you can have a bit of a dialogue with him, a dialogue about his attitude, his behaviours, and how the things he said or did, how it made you feel, the effect it had on you. Now, it releases energy in you to get that out because the subconscious doesn't really know the difference between a visualised event and a real event in these terms. So the subconscious will accept that you're making amends with your father in some way and sorting it. So when you've listened to his responses and you to work it out so there's a positive outcome, it's your mind after all. And telling him how you felt helps release those emotions. And if you listen for his responses, even though they're in your own mind, it can help with understanding because your subconscious probably already understands why he behaved as he did. He was always giving you grumpy faces and ignoring you, so he might say, I was very busy with work, I was just trying to earn enough money so that we'd all have plenty of money to live and be happy. So therefore you have understanding, and therefore from understanding comes forgiveness. 
Understanding leads to forgiveness. Okay, so that was method one, going back in time and having a little role play and telling the person who affected you, not in an angry way, in a nice way, how it made you feel. And listen for their explanations so that you can gain understanding, which leads to forgiveness. And then your conscious mind of today, when you're done and you're out of your meditation, can reason it and think about it and understand it better because you're no longer a child like you were then with poor reasoning skills. You've got good reasoning skills now and you can understand and you can forgive. Number two method to help alleviate self-doubt is to have a role play another gestalt therapy with the inner critic. Now I told you about the doubter and he's also called the inner critic as well. Now I have a video about this on my other channel please see the link in the description for this video and it's a gestalt method on how to address the inner critic but I'll outline it for you here now so what you do is you go into a meditative state and you do a visualization and you visualize looking in a mirror and in the mirror you see yourself okay so you looking in the mirror are your doubter personality fragment your inner critic and in the mirror you see yourself, the conscious you of today. So as the doubter, you say to the you in the mirror, all the things you doubt, all the things you're criticizing about yourself. I doubt that you're going to be good at your job. I doubt your mothering capabilities. I don't think you're any good at this. I don't think you're any good at that. And yourself in the mirror is listening to all this so what we're doing is we're verbalizing we're getting out into the open everything that the self-doubter is doubting about so that we can correct it so then we swap around in the mirror is the doubter personality fragment that looks like you and you the conscious you of today are looking in the mirror and you say into the mirror that is not true because I am a good mother because I am good at my job because I'm trying my best. And you consciously choose the reasons why the doubter is wrong about you and tell the doubter such. And you tell the doubter, I don't need your input. I don't need your advice. I'm fine. I'm in control. Now you can swap again and allow the doubter to say more of its doubts about you to your face in the mirror. And then you can swap again and explain to the doubter why it's not true, it's not warranted, and how you are in control and you don't need its help and advice. So, when you're done, you realise that now that you've got this out in the open, instead of the doubter subconsciously bugging you, it's verbalised what it had to say, and you've put it right. And you'll find that over time the doubter will start to recede, and it won't pop up in all these different situations, because it starts to learn you have got the wheel, you are in control, you can decide about you, you are your own mirror now, you don't need the doubter to give you advice about what it thinks about you and your capabilities, you are in control, it will learn that and you can move forward being your own mirror and making your own judgments about self. And number three, the third method on how to help remove self-doubt is to as you're going along and this is day to day let's say you're doing something at work you're about to hand in some, some work you've done or you're about to do a presentation or something like that and you feel the doubter telling you that you're useless worthless this is futile there's no point in doing it you're going to fail etc etc you can say to it thank you but i've got this i don't need your help so this is a, a quick instantaneous fix a conscious method day to day so you perceive yourself as separate to that doubter it's not part of you it's not a feeling that's coming up and saying oh and just making you feel crap what's the point what's the point you perceive it as a separate entity like I described you perceive it as the personality fragment like the voice on your shoulder saying don't do this and you say to it thank you very much but I've got this I don't need you so it's moving on from the gestalt therapy in the mirror technique to when you're in the middle of it in day-to-day -day life you say no thank you I've got this perceive it separate to you you're not swept up in the doubter it's not you perceive it's a separate entity no thank you I've got this and allow it to recede into the background and let the conscious you of today take the wheel in that moment 
So that's been how to help eliminate self-doubt and why you might have self-doubt in your day-to-day -day life. I hope that's helped you and helped you to figure out some of the ways that this has come about and three ways to consciously work on this. You can unpick it. You are a wonderful being just like everyone else. We're all individuals and yet we are all wonderful and amazing and we're all one with creation. You deserve not to have crippling self-doubt. I'm not saying have no doubts about self, a little bit of self-doubt is helpful because it helps us weigh up if we really should be doing what, we, what we're doing, for example if it's not really safe or not, <laughs> so a little bit of self-doubt is, is good and it keeps us balanced and we must always question the self a little bit, so I hope that helped you today and help support others in the comments section too because if there's other people with self-doubt then it's good to know there's others and they're not alone. So don't forget to click subscribe if you're not already a subscriber to receive regular spiritual inspiration on your journey through life. Like and share also because they're raising the mass vibration together. So go now in love and peace.